this is sanjeev from indian stock management coico i have my friend shayanta with me first of all i would like to thank entire imk pgp your family for electing us and giving the opportunity to represent the insight sir to begin the very first episode of the bl03 we are super excited to have our guest nikunj and ankit who are the founder and co-founders of the pm school they together built a great product management community that have the pm school followers community managers content creators pms hiring managers product leaders etc <laughs> all the above mentioned things are just the tip of the iceberg and now let's hear from the founders themselves like what to take for them to build a great community and achieve a significant amount of success in the journey so far ankit and nikunj first of all thank you so much for accepting our invite and giving your time to us yeah, thank thanks you. a lot sanjeev and shanta yeah so to start with like you know first question like for both of you would like to ask what was your internal thought process or what was going through in your mind when you first thought about the pm school and how the P- idea of the pm school has come and how it has taken the shape uh on right. do you want to give your version yeah th- thank you for asking that question and first of all super glad to be here uh, sandeep so yeah uh, it, it's been uh, like a very random journey I, i'll tell you what happened before pm school i'm not sure if you have uh, read ankit's blog So yeah. uh, Ankit and I are super close. Uh, we we met when we were at SDFC Life. Uh, I used to like uh, go to Ankit's place post work and uh, tell him that hey, obviously this this is like a very aspirational dream that everyone wants to start up someday. And I, I come from a Marwari background wherein my dad and everyone in my family hate that uh, I work in a job. So in yeah. fact, I'm the first person to work in the corporate world. so uh, and this is not my first attempt but uh, i had been pushing ankit that he let's start something let's do something and ankit had always had that question like what right what can we do right where do we start and uh, both of us having worked in product we used to like brainstorm random ideas the first idea we uh, came up with, uh, with was totally shit uh, there, there was this uh, concept called uh, can we uh, help people charge their phones on the go because uh, there was a day when I, i met ankit and my phone was not charged and i didn't have my charger and I'm like hey uh, i read about this startup uh, in china which uh, essentially is like a portable uh, charging uh, vending machine wherein uh, you can just open up the app and look at uh, where, where where can you find like a, a portable charger on the go and we reach out to the manufacturers of that company that i remember that company's name it's called ladlem tech we we send them uh and uh, a sort of uh, approx estimate that hey we will need these vending machines uh, what's the cost just trying to figure what's the business model we also reached out to one one of the friends uh, uh, that, that ankit had at my, uh, at a vc firm and we pitched them a deck uh, it was like a 9 10 page uh, slide a slide random slide we just cooked it up over like two days Uh, no idea nothing just a uh, concept uh, d- discussed in the evening and uh, while obviously talking to that vc friend who obviously uh, ripped us apart and we realized that we do, uh, do, didn't really know how it's going to work and did not think about like distribution uh, whether is the right time maybe obviously in couple of years uh, phone charging sort of uh, powers would increase there was no long term vision to it it was just cause we had to do something uh post that i don't remember there were a bunch of ideas but uh one random day ankit just called me and like hey we are product managers we've been in product management for the past couple of years and uh, i and ankit individually have been helping folks get into product like very sort of uh, uh, actively in in fact a lot of juniors of mine used to reach out uh, when they had upcoming interviews and used to take mock interviews so i realized hey we we know what product management is do we sort of start uh, uh, so maybe a tuition class or do we set up like a mock interview service what do we start with so uh, within like an hour or two we set up like a landing page we were not sure what to start with it was the first version of the product was like a mock interview service wherein uh, we just put it out there that hey anybody who is looking to uh, interview or essentially looking for a peer to uh, practice uh, we are there and let us know uh, ankit had a cousin obviously where do you start right your first set of users are your family I mean, I'll, i'll tell that story yeah once <laughs> over to you i think you should take this part so yeah again uh, as nikun mentioned that you know we were you know discussing ideas almost every week and we actually uh, presented to a vc as well and realized that uh, yeah. and basically embarrassed ourselves right and uh, what what was happening parallelly was that i was mentoring a cousin of mine his his name is saurabh bhatia uh he was at that point of time fourth year in iit bhu and 
surprisingly uh, because i had not been going to engineering colleges for hiring but a lot of companies had started coming to engineering colleges for apm roles and uh, it so happened that uh, now saurabh told me later that at his campus about 150 200 odd folks sat for flipkart's apm role and he calls me and says uh, bhaiya mujhe apm banna hai aur mujhe aata kuch nahi hai yahan pe sabko apm banna hai for whatever reasons people have figured out that it's a glamorous role or for whatever reasons right they people want to become apm right without even figuring out why do they want to become apm probably it's because the salary probably because a strategic strategic role whatever it is and he said yaar aap mujhe padha do and i started teaching him helping him with you know case studies helping him in mock interviews and eventually he reached the last round the hr round of flipkart apm role and he was able to crack a product analyst role at zilingo and he reached the last round at a couple of other companies as well and so that was a good validation that there is a good space and then i actually uh, checked with a few b schools and a few in other engineering colleges as well ki how many people actually are sitting for a flipkart apm or let's say an academy pm or swiggy pm role and we figured out that there is a space there is a niche space it's not as big as let's say uh teaching for sdes becoming sd or let's say teaching for cat it's not that big a space but then there is definitely a niche space and uh, while i was talking to nikunj i was also talking to kushal as well and kushal was a third co-founder he had you know he was uh, he's re- he was really inspired by what lambda school had done in the west mm. and one fine day i decided hey uh, that obviously you need to do something right and we need wanted to start up something and i just called up nikunj and said let's at least create a landing page he said what do we call it i'm like let's call it pm school and that's how we gave the name it was like in the spur of the moment it just came out a hey, pm school and then uh, one of our friends who is right now the head of design at uh, access free charge uh, who was also with us at hdfc life and uh, we would keep hanging uh, out a lot together i asked him hey can you make us a logo make a logo for us his name is azaz rafiqi great designer one of the best design guys i have met and i asked him can you design a logo for us he said yeah i'll design a logo for you and within like the next week we had a logo as well and uh, we started posting content on linkedin and that's how one thing led to the other and then we started a cohort and right now we are on our 16th or 17th cohort right now and what were the difficulties in initial phases uh, when we started up what was the difficulties you were going through uh distribution right the first challenge is getting your uh, first set of students uh, obviously yeah. as a product manager you understand where people spend uh, maximum number of time you're looking at okay uh should i uh, uh go the digital marketing route get people to know about what pm school is uh but ankit and i had this one thing in mind we we should always approach our first at least one and a half two years organically not spend a single penny on ads and again obviously since this being a bootstrap setup our approach was maybe let's start creating content put it out there figure out a platform where uh, our potential janta would spend time and anybody who's looking to a let's say apply for a pm role or even uh, trying to find content around product management what is that platform out there we figured linkedin being a professional uh, network let's set up a page i remember uh, i don't know you can just scroll down on linkedin like two and a half years back and look at the first set of uh, content pieces wherein uh, i am posting like a one minute video ankit is posting like a one minute video around what is product management and like small bites right and um, i realized how content works uh, and obviously ankit had seen this with his uh, stints at tiny owl and fine where it's more like a game of consistency you keep posting and uh, one fine day obviously if you posting consistently for a certain uh, number of weeks you will start attracting certain audiences uh, the first cohort that we did had five students uh, one of whom was uh, ankit's cousin uh, as ankit said right from no he wasn't uh, he, so he was basically prior to the cohort uh, and then his batchmates actually signed up yeah, yeah i think because we posted and... about yeah we posted about the cohort and uh, people reached out to him sort of that hey how's pm school and uh, four of his friends from iit bhu signed up and there was one student who was nikun's colleague at uh, haptic she also signed yeah, up yeah, yeah, right? so we had five students or five or six students in total right and it was all hustling in the beginning yeah basically i just put it out let people reach out to you convince people so the first hurdle was obviously selling right i don't come from a sales background but the first one was selling how do you give how do you show them the value right that actually we are good right because at that point of time we weren't as senior enough right uh, at that point of time we weren't like svps or cxos or cpos of company right so how do we actually convey the value to them that hey uh, what we are teaching is good 
right? Yeah. And you will actually benefit from that. So again, that was one big challenge in the, in the initial days. Once people started getting placed from BM school, then you know yeah. that uh, that snowball effect came into play. That flywheel started getting created, and people then realized, okay, these guys are doing something good. They are credible. And what was your your journey in onboarding the hiring managers or like you know PM school mentors? Oh, initially, so this is very interesting. So we wanted to. So basically, uh, one of my inspirations is basically Scalar Academy. I really admire yeah. Anshuman Singh. Anshuman Singh was from my school, same batch uh, in Lucknow, and uh, he was the first engineer to be hired from from uh, from Facebook uh, in Facebook from India, mm-hmm. right back in two thousand ten, and he started Scalar Academy. And there they had a setup which I really like uh, that people uh, not only they go through the program they also have a mentor assigned to them. And uh, one of his findings was that people out of like the forty or fifty or let's say hundred odd people who actually got into let's say a uh, SD one role at one of the big companies, a good a majority of them had an elder brother or a sister who was working at that company. now i don't know the exact percentage that's why i don't want to quote but majority of them or let's say a high on the higher side had actually a brother or sister who was in that company right and you would have also seen right people let's say someone who is in iit uh, uh, and it, it they will also train or coach or mentor their younger sibling to get into iit and it's highly likely that both of them will be in iit right and that's what that as a pattern which you've seen in iims also you would have seen let's say Uh, अगर मेरा बड़ा भाई आई एम के गया है तो मैं भी शायद मेरी प्रोबेबिलिटी गया बिकॉज ही विल टेल मी हाउ टू क्रैक आई एम के और लेट्स हाउ टू क्रैक कैट एंड देन हाउ टू क्रैक अदर प्रोसेस फॉर आई एम के राइट एंड दैट्स व्हाई वी थॉट दैट हे वी नीड टू अपार्ट फ्रॉम जस्ट लेट्स से प्रोवाइडेड बाय अदर कंपेरेटर्स एज वेल व्हाट विल बी अ डिफरेंशिएटर फॉर अस एंड वी थॉट व्हाई नॉट लॉन्च अ मेंटरशिप प्रोग्राम एज वेल एंड हेंस वी पुट आउट nikun posted a link uh, that hey we are looking out for mentors and i think around 100 people 100 pm senior pms or associate directors reached out to nikun they commented basically on nikun's post on linkedin and then i reached started reaching out to them by checking their name in the comment just sending them a message very manual uh, creating a whatsapp group and them onboarding them into the whatsapp group and just uh, reaching out to them calling them and explaining them what mentorship is so initially we thought about like uh, 20 to 30 odd mentors right that's how we got it and now obviously with with time we created a whole process that how a mentor gets onboarded right we send them an onboarding email they they fill a form then they then they get then they join the slack group or the community and obviously uh, uh, pretty much now automated but at that point of time it was all like reaching out manually got it and surprisingly right a lot of mentors also wanted to do this because in tech you would oh. see that in tech you would see that a lot of sd2 sd3 engineering managers vp engineering they are actually already mentoring uh, students with let's say other cohort based courses right yeah. and everyone wants to give back eventually right to the community mm-hmm. how i let's say how i solved this architecture problem or how i solved this infrastructure problem or how let's say i became an engineering manager i would definitely want to you know teach younger folks that hey you can also do the same process right true uh, and that's 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 the idea and a lot of product people uh, they 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 said that hey there's nothing Like it's great that you guys are doing this because we wanted to do this, but there was no platform to do this, and uh, that's how we basically onboarded the first set of mentors. Right after that, again, yeah. when I uh, again after that, the word spread and people really wanted to become mentors as well. And uh, right now, we have a stage where our uh, where basically PM school alumni they are actually becoming mentors. So it's all Amen. organic right now. Got it. Great, Ankit. So uh, since the day you guys have founded uh, PM School, I'm sure there must have been many milestones, right? Uh, the, the first milestones were have been really great, and now also. So what has been your greatest satisfaction till now that you believe, you know, you remember that okay, this happened. I think that was a turning point of PM School or anything like that that you would like to share. Kunch, play placements. Uh, I remember uh, obviously once you have like five students in a cohort, it's easier to place them. But the day we we scaled to thirty uh, folks in a cohort, uh, we we realized uh, how how do you place thirty people in a two ma- month frame, right? That that was like a biggest challenge. And Ankit and our mentors and the TAs, uh, hiring managers we work with, we we had to sort of make sure that every student uh, gets like three to four interviews to be able to get their first role, right? Because track management is super sort of convoluted. And uh, for us, the challenge was to reach fifty uh, placements. I think that was a really big milestone. Uh, 
uh, i remember uh, uh, my uh, sec- second and third cohort uh, wherein uh, there were certain students who were not placed within the two months and we were fighting to get them placed and i remember a, uh, a student like reaching out to us on email and i think uh, one of uh, ankit students uh, ankit mentored this fellow who sent him a watch also as a gift after he oh, got- yeah Oh, yeah. I've got like cakes. I've got watches. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, Nikunj, I and Kushal, we got a wedding invitation also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, so cool. that's the thing about you form basically, uh, you basically form bonds, you basically for, uh, forge friendships uh, along the way, right? For for me, if I were to remember the key milestone, so the first one was basically the first sale, right? Because till that time you haven't done that first sale. I mean, you are there, but you're really not there, right? And once that first sale was done, we were like, okay, this is real. Now we actually have to teach people, right? Now that accountability just increased by, let's say, 10x. And the other milestone would be, let's say, the other milestone would be uh, life challenges picking up for us. That has acted as a great growth loop for us, right? Because people, when they solve life challenges, uh, if they qualify for the top five or let's say the top 10 and they get a certificate, it's a, it's a matter of pride for them. Right, because uh, I have been able to solve a life challenge or a case study, PM case study problem without uh, actually being a PM right now, right, a practicing PM. And then when I get rewarded or uh, by PM school, I want to share it and show off to the world, right? It's a matter of pride for me because one, uh, other people will notice. Uh, it might be that an HR or a TA or a, or let's say talent acquisition manager or some hiring manager or some co-founder might you know fi- find me or discover me on LinkedIn. Second, it also helps me in creating a portfolio, right? If I've solved like four or five case studies, uh, I can put them on a Notion link or a Google Drive and that becomes a portfolio, which basically is a supplement for my CV, which essentially is a boring CV because I don't have product prior product experience, right? So that was a big milestone that people actually, so there was nothing around product management, right? There's lead code for uh, tech. There is interview bit by Skiller Academy for tech. Uh, so many platforms for technology uh, students, aspirants, right? For UX, geeks for geeks. And Behance, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for, from a product manager's perspective, anybody who is getting into their first PM role, there's like a chicken and egg problem. How do yeah. you signal your PM skills? Exactly, exactly. But you're yeah. coming from a domain X and you get this question wherever you go, how do I crack my first PM role? So having like a channel, we, we didn't know uh, how, how this is going to work. It was essentially as posting challenges or assignments we had solved when we applied at Kamis. And uh, one fine day Ankit was like, hey, let's post like a challenge question only and see if you oh, can yeah. uh, uh. And pe- people started submitting solutions for that, right? And which is what we have translated into a product on our website. If you look at our website, today yeah. uh, candidates can, uh, we have like a weekly challenge wherein you can solve that challenge and create like a post profile and build those signals. Think of this profile as essentially like an indicator which we've been sharing with hiring managers and they look at candidate profiles on the PM School website and basis higher folks yeah and uh, very interesting stories i know of like i can like count like five or ten people on my fingertips who actually got a job just by solving these challenges there's uh ananya nandan she's an apm right now in mpl she was the winner five or six times of our life challenge and this uh, shoy hussein is from iit Guwahati. he won the challenge i think about four or five times there's so many people i can count who are who actually were so consistent in solving these challenges and they were able to build a portfolio, get an APM job, track an APM job at like a very good company, right? Because people notice, right? And and I could say that COVID helped at that point of time because people were spending a lot of time on LinkedIn, right? Right. including the hiring managers or the, you know, the uh, VP products as well. Ask a, a continued question to what you said just now that it's a great community that uh, PM school has turned out to. So, what I would like to know is how do you build such a community? What is success mantra that goes beyond a teacher-student or mentor-student relationship to such a wonderful community? Apart from the uh, the things that is there as an uh, as an entrepreneur and stuff, how do you build such a community? Any success mantra? Like? All right. So you're talking about the community, let's say the PM school students alumni community, or let's say the LinkedIn uh, followership. Uh, the student community, the relationship between the mentor Got and the students. So when we started uh, uh, the community, right? Uh, when we started onboarding students, I actually made a list of values which should, which have to be, you know, percolated or let's say uh, passed on to the community. 
and those were those values were the same which actually i would follow while mentoring my students or nikun would follow or let's say kushal would follow while mentoring his students right and i actually made like a proper doc that these are the values uh, which we need to pass on to the community and in the initial days i would keep posting that doc again this is very operational but the idea is when you are mentoring folks just give your true effort to them just without any expectations just help people a lot because when they see that they will again help the other person uh, who will come, who will reach out to them for you know help all these tools it could be slack it could be any tool these are just means to an end right essentially like religion has no slack right yes but people follow religion because there is a set of rules right a set of values right and those are the values which we created in the beginning which we wanted to you know pass on to you know pm school students and those students when they become alumni they for they you know pass on to you know the future students that's what the idea is here uh, help everyone just be nice to everyone it's so important in our pm school community that you have to be nice to everyone you have to help everyone today if you were to post that hey i am interviewing for a fan company or let's say i am interviewing at a gaming company in india and i want a mock interview done uh, i am pretty sure two or three people would easily be available uh, today evening or tomorrow evening to you know help you with a mock interview if you were to post that hey i want my cv reviewed by tomorrow i am pretty sure someone would review your cv right so that's the idea we helped initially and uh, those values were passed on to the folks and they are now passing it on to the you know the future cohorts right it goes a long way yeah 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 exactly just like you guys are in imk right if let's say uh, when you guys pass out right or let's say second year right or a first year right yes. or let's say your your uh, uh, people from your program reach out to you would want to help them right because you were helped by someone who was a senior to you exactly exactly uh, my next uh, next question is uh, how do a pm school separate itself from its competitors how do it how do it evolves or how does it, what new does it brings to the market and to separate out separate itself from the from its competitors nikunj uh, see ideally uh, be it any product or service right uh, you you have to talk to your users and figure out what works for them obviously you can draw narratives and learnings from what a competitor is doing in a certain way and that's working and there's no harm in obviously figuring certain things that you should add to your program but fundamentally at the end of the day you are looking at your cohort of people who are consuming your content or uh, joining you um, i think one thing that really helps ankit and myself with our uh, degree of experience over the years is being very focused on our students and our end users in fact uh our nps uh, has been uh, more than uh, 90% and uh, in general if you look at uh, uh, the ratings of people and the testimonials people have organically written about pm school right without any effort in fact most of the distribution and the cohort uh, so success and admission we have got is organic we have not spent a single penny on ads it's word of mouth uh, for example the first 5 20 30 students who, who completed the course they went ahead and uh, uh, spoke about pm school to their friends right so i think what really helps is um, you you try to understand what's working from a certain for example in a certain cohort today we'll get certain uh, feedback on a certain module the way we are teaching and we have been iterating on that for example the content that we teach to students today ha- has totally changed from what it was one year back right and the way we teach also for example early on we had only a mentor first model wherein you attend these live classes and post that every student got like a mentor to brainstorm on now we have additionally added teaching assistants to the program which is essentially different from the mentor the mentor's responsibility is segregated towards taking mock interviews and more interview prep first when the teaching assistant is more responsible to make sure that students complete their assignments on time they understand certain concepts so think of the teaching as in very analog as or similar to what we had in when uh, think of uh, the support to the teachers right so uh, i think just iterating on the model iterating how uh, cohort based courses work and taking in feedback and listening to your end users right. that's, that's the main one for as cliche as it sounds right. like nikun's answer was very strategic which i like about i am more of a i would say emotional person right so for us what has helped us and basically i handle the marketing efforts at pm school so what has really helped us uh, one point which i would obviously concur with nikun is staying you know connected to the users right uh, essentially your users are let's say people who want to become pm aspiring pm right and that's what has helped us right let's say content has really helped us in standing out from the competition uh the kind of content which we are posting on everyday basis so pm school if you look we post every day of the year 
we we take a break only in the last seven days of the year and uh, i keep pushing manish who's our head of community i keep pushing him so we are posting every day of a year so when you start posting you know uh, content which is meaningful it definitely helps so content has definitely helped us and the other it's about basically you know uh, picking up or basically getting inspired by let's say the patterns you will start observing certain patterns for example live challenge it started picking up right uh, and we realized that there's a pattern that people really want to solve then uh, we would experiment a lot with content property so if you see pm of the week on tuesday it works a lot for us yeah. and uh, like uh, in back into 2020 uh, the person who was heading the community for a sai bhargav right he just said hey why don't we do something like a humans of bombay for product right? and i'm like yeah why not let's try that and uh, uh, we posted and we got like a great engagement on that post i think about 150 odd likes something like that and i got uh, i think around 100 comments on that so those are the things which we are very experimental mm-hmm. uh, the other is obviously as i said uh, content uh, second is being very experimental third is basically just picking up on the patterns that what actually is working right now and we are very quick to do that if a pro- content property doesn't work uh, we will just uh, dismiss it and you know just stop it right? and that's how we are working right now I'm, I'm talking from a community or let's say from a marketing standpoint, from an operational educational experience point of view, Nikan has already uh, told that. Right? Got it. And if I ask, like, just in terms of numbers, what was the growth rate of the PM school in the recent days? What would you like to share? In terms of pure student numbers, we have grown 55%. Like last year, it's been two years, uh, three yeah. months to be exact. And uh, uh, in terms of our growth on social media and penetration, I think it's more than 100%. Look at the number of followers on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and our properties. It's really grown uh, tremendously. I think uh, currently, obviously, it's kind of uh, streamlined into 10 to 15% because we are at a certain sort of pedestal and it's super difficult to now grow at that same pace. But considering the first two years, uh, cohort numbers, 55%, I think that's really good. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and go ahead. So, from a placement perspective, also, uh, again, uh, the growth has been tremendous. Uh, we would have grown uh, around seventy or eighty percent in the placement front as well, right? And uh, that's the idea. Uh, how do we keep improving upon each aspect? Placements has helped us in uh, building a great flywheel because when one gets placed, he or she tells ten others also, right? That hey, yeah. I got a job by being school. And regarding the placements, recently I saw a post from PM School. Some some people from cohort got placed into Atlassian also. Oh yes. So how was the kind of journey with the Atlassian and big players? It was uh, very smooth. So uh, uh, the the uh, talent acquisition manager Bina, she had reached out to us last year as well while she uh-huh. was at Media.net, and she knew she had basically good words about PM School, good feedback about PM School, and. Uh, she reached out that, hey, we are hiring uh, for the first time in India, we're hiring APMs and uh, we want to hire from PM school. And it was a very standard process. Uh, she gave us a JD and uh, we posted the JD and the uh, problem statement, the case study. Uh, and uh, two people finally made it. And uh, even they couldn't believe that it, Atlassian hired them. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. I mean, even I couldn't believe that Atlassian reached out first. But then, yeah, when uh, <laughs> people got placed, I was like, yeah, it's Atlassian only. <laughs> <laughs> and this eight weeks cohort, course, whatever it is, will you people, every cohort will be will be refined or how the course structure will be going? Like, taking the feedback and improving that one or it is fixed? So, we, do, uh, we take, yeah, go ahead. Obviously, it's iterative, right? Uh, currently, yeah. what you see, the way we teach, the crux is same. Essentially, the focus as of today is people who are trying to get into the first product management role. That's our TG. We are, we are not helping folks who are already product managers and trying to get into senior PM roles. That's a very different problem statement. So the idea is to help folks who are into that zero year to, let's say, six years, seven years working bracket. You could be an SD. You could be a, a UX person. We are trying to help you. The cohort structure, how it works is it's eight weeks because... Uh, essentially, we did not want to build like a long form program which goes into different details. The focus is more towards interview prep. 
Uh, the focus is more towards to get you into their first PM role. A lot of the things that you will learn in the cohort are uh, trying to expose you to different types of questions you will get in product manager inter in interviews. The product manager interviews also change from company to company, from a startup to let's say a, a big MNC or even a B2B to B2C because the type of product changes, the uh, requirement changes and Ankit can obviously talk about it in detail, but certain uh, hiring managers would come up with, let's say, a criteria ABC, they're looking for more consumer focused design thinking uh, mindset. Certain uh, hiring manager would be like, hey, I need someone who has like a strong technical background, right? So different uh, companies would have different requirements. How do we sort of build like that one program that gives you a flavor of different challenges, these five, six problems that you would get when you apply for product interviews. Um, we, we take in feedback from the companies that we're working at. In fact, the type of questions also you get are kind of changing over the years because these days the product manager role is very specific generalist and wherein you need to understand the business side as well. So we have added certain flavors to accommodate that as the market changes, as the kind of product roles evolve and the type, type of companies that we're working with. Okay. And uh, regarding this one, uh, Nikunj and Ankit, for both of you, like if I, if for a layman, if we ask like why one should have product management as a career or consulting, marketing, so many other things, are there, why PM as a career means what would you use? Okay. Nikunj? Yeah, so uh, see, it's very subjective. <clears throat> Uh, what I would say is, I'll tell you the reason why I wanted to be a product manager. That's very, very specific to me. Uh, yeah. And I've tried different things. Uh, I've worked in startups. Uh, I've done sales. I've done operations. I've also tried to get into FMCG. I had my FMCG startup uh, running ops for uh, from a kitchen, like uh, trying to build like a, a full-blown packaged business. Uh, what I realized is technology is something that I wanted to stay close to. Uh, 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 think of it as like a personal sort of bias towards understanding technology concepts. Unfortunately, I was not from a comp science background, but I wanted to stay uh, close to technology. The second thing from a, a PM role perspective, what I liked was it's super dynamic. None of your days are the same. Uh, on a certain day, you're working with marketing to figure out the GTM for a certain feature. You're figuring what are the comps? How do you land certain sort of uh, communication to a certain uh, segment of users? Uh, on another day, you're working with engineering to figure out the nuances of certain sort of edge cases of how the feature works out. Um, uh, end of the week, let's say you're working with your designers to figure out how the UX or the design of a feature works. works. So that multifunctional nature of the product role is what I personally dig. And uh, uh, on a personal standpoint, being close to technology. These are the two things that I would say. Yeah. I think pretty much similar to what Nikun said, right? Yeah. Uh, multifunctional thing and eventually once you release something right uh, and you see the impact of it it's very I mean rewarding obviously monetarily is something else but you get a lot of satisfaction out of it and uh, that's the idea and I think that's one of the reasons why people should want to become a product manager right not because of salary or the glamour because eventually it's going to be a very excruciating role Right. I, we know of uh, like so many PM school grads, they, when they become APM, they reach out to me one month later and they're like, yeah, yeah, pe to PM wala kuch kaam hai. Uh, <laughs> and it's very <laughs> tough for me. I have to attend meetings and then there is a, someone who's just not listening to me. I'm like, these things will happen. Yeah. These, this is a part and parcel of becoming, of becoming a product manager. And you have to be, you have to realize that these, these things will happen. You have to wait or you have to be in the game. And once you have released stuff, right, let's say once you've worked on a feature and it gets released and once you see the impact, everything basically uh, gets compensated by that right? because it's uh, it's a very rewarding experience eventually. And you have to stay true to that. Right? Mm -hmm. Got it. And one, one more question is like, uh, Nikunj, like I know you're working as a senior PM at, in Swiggy. So how are you managing both PM school and your regular job? Right? So uh, it comes organic to you, right? Uh, I think... Uh... Uh, generally, uh, as a person, I've always uh, tried to work on multiple things, always, if not just the current company. I've always had like uh, a weekend thing, whether I'm running like a food uh, dips business or I'm helping my dad with something or uh, trying to obviously uh, set up like an ad agency, which I tried with my uncle. So essentially, uh, I've always been restless as a person. Uh, after Friday ends and on a Saturday, I, I cannot be empty handed. I always try to sort of pick up on certain projects. What really helps is uh, see today when you are running a startup, right? You need not do everything on your own and you learn this over your own.
sort of careers when you build a business. You'll have people to help you. We have like a strong team of 11 people uh, at PM School. I handle a certain department and I own that. Uh, Ankit, Kushal uh, are owning sort of certain things. So essentially, it's kind of an autopilot wherein we are organically growing. Well, another thing what really helps is it's a bootstrap uh, setup so we don't have uh, VCs on our assets to reach certain growth numbers. We are growing organically. Cool. Uh, for us, the target is to help people get placed. We don't have like uh, unsustainable targets to get like 1,000 students in a batch. For us, the idea is to get 40, 50 students every two months and try to get them uh, placements as soon as possible. That That's the end goal, right? Um, in terms of pure time commitment, Monday to Friday, I just work uh, on my uh, week job. Saturday, Sunday is when I work on PM school and it's essentially something that I love. So it's helpful. If you are trying to work on something over the weekend that does not sort of make you happy, then obviously it won't work. Yeah. Got it. And finally, the last question we would like to ask, what are your PM school future plans? So uh, there are three things that we are working on and you'll see that on a website. Uh, well, obviously, a cohort is our core. That's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, and we want to scale that and we want to sort of place as many people in their first product manager roles. Yeah. Uh, there's this challenges product that we uh, sp spoke about, right? We wanted that to be the platform for people, people who even don't go through a PM school cohort or any cohort, right? Yeah. Folks who are not able to afford a certain uh, PM course. Uh, we want them to participate in our weekly challenges, solve these product problems and get exposure to product problems firsthand, right? That's the yeah. second thing that we are working on aggressively. Uh, the third thing is we have recently launched uh, micro courses. Uh, obviously, the first course is called PMX. It's there on our website. It's essentially yeah. like a very mini version of a course, folks. Uh, who would want to sort of do this uh, in like a couple of hours and people who have some understanding of product management but trying to figure how do they land their first role, right? And would not want to take like a long-term commitment of two months for them, yeah. this is like an ideal course. We would come up with uh, three more uh, micro courses in the next three months. We are working on analytics for PMs, technology for PMs. And these courses are kind of targeted towards folks who are, let's say, early product managers and struggling okay. with a certain sort of niche problem. For example, how do you sort of uh, work with engineers and technology uh, as a domain does not come naturally to you. So the, these are the three things that's our focus currently. And obviously we'd want to evolve into newer segments as time evolves. Okay. Ankit, you want to add anything to that? I think that's uh, Nikunj uh, summit perfectly. Got it. And thank you so much for uh, both of you for giving your time and uh, giving a valuable insight to us. Over to you, Shyam. Yes, uh, it has been, I think, uh, the best 30 minutes I have spent. Uh, not more than 30 minutes, actually. I've spent on a weekend here at IMK. I I'm an aspiring product manager, by the way, uh, in my career and, and in a personal view. So this session has been really enlightening. And uh, thank you, Nikunj and Ankit, uh, for taking your time out. The campus is always open. We invite you to come to our campus and have a session like this for all of our students. Of Definitely. course, uh, of course, uh, this uh, recording will be put up in our uh, in our social media handles as well as part of Inside Circle. And also, uh, we will look forward to more engagement with you in the future days. So sure, definitely. Thanks. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks a lot, Sanjeev. Thanks, thanks. a lot, Shanta. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you so much. Thank you, guys. And I'm super glad to engage with you. Feel free to reach out to us. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Feel free to reach out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much.